Hello, it's Gem Games here once again and welcome to this new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In this video we're going to create this item drop system. So when we open the inventory, we right click and we click drop, it will drop the item. Like this. So yeah, let's get started. First, we want to go to the interfaces folder and we want to open the interactable blueprint interface. And we want to add a new function here, and this will be called set amount. And I did a little mistake. Okay, now it's better. And we want to add an input, it will be called amount. And it will be type integer. Compile, save, and we can actually close this. The next thing, what we have to do, we want to go to the blueprints and to the structures folder, and we want to open the item struct. And here we want to go to the structure and we want to add a new variable. This variable will be called class, and we want to search for a actor, and down here, object types, actor, class reference like this. Okay, save and we can also close. Actually, let's move this over the item action. So it's between the mesh and item actions. Now we can save and close this. After that, what we want to do, we want to go to the data tables and we want to open the items DT. Here we can actually delete the test to item. We only need the first one here. Let's change the row name to like base item or something like that. Let's also copy it and paste it to here to the item ID. And now here under the class, we can select the... Actually, let's not select it yet. Let's just go to the third person map and then let's go to the interactable. And here we have this test item. Let's actually create a new folder. Let's call this pickups or something like that. Let's move the test item there. Let's actually delete these items on our level if you have this. And uh, why does my... Oh, my control didn't work, but okay. Yeah, I will select all these and delete. Now let's open the pickups folder and let's rename this to be base item. This will be the item base class basically. Now we can open it and let's move it next to the a level and everything else. Now let's go back to the item items DT and let's ch change the class to base item like that. Now we can save and close this. So what we have to do next is here on the base item, let's go to the viewport. One thing is we want to select the item and we want to first we want to simulate physics from here. Then we want to change the collision preset to custom. Now we can change here the pawn and the world dynamic to overlap, like that. Now one more thing that we have to do, now that we have simulated the physics, we want to put all these under the item. So let's select everything else like this and move them under the item like this. Okay, because otherwise when we simulate the physics on this one, these will not follow the item. Now they will because they are attached to that basically. So let's compile, let's save. And actually one more thing here on the item ID, let's change, change it to be the base item. And also let's make this not instance editable and not explosion spawn anymore. Okay, and let's also change the interaction text to like base item, something like that. Let's compile, let's save, let's go back to the third person map. Now we want to go to the components and we want to open the BBC inventory. And here on BBC inventory, we can close everything else and we want to create a new function. This will be called drop item. 
here we have to add three inputs. The first one will be called, uh, sorry, let's call it class. And let's search for a actor. And again here, actor class reference, like that. The second input will be called amount and it will be type integer. And the third one will be called index and it will be also the integer. Now we want to create a two local variables. The first one will be called dropped and it will be boolean. And the second one will be called uh, trace length and it will be type float. And let's compile and let's select the trace length and let's set the default value to, I think 80 is pretty good, okay? This will be the starting length of the line trace that will be used to check if we have something in front of us when we are trying to drop an item, you know? Okay, so what we have to do next is we want to get a while loop. And let's get it to here. And what we have to check here is we want to check if we have not dropped yet. So dropped not boolean and let's actually make this as our favorite because we need it often. So if we have not dropped yet then we can continue. Then what we have to do we want to get the trace length and we want to minus I mean subtract from it. Let's subtract 5 then let's set it back to be that way you from the loop body. And yeah. So it will minus 5 from it every time this place. So basically we will start 5 uh, like minus 5 from this. So from 75. But it doesn't matter. So the next thing that we have to do is we want to get the play ref here. Let's leave some space. Let's get first person camera. Then what we have to do is we want to get a get world location. Let's also get forward vector. And then we want to line trace by channel. Let's get it from here. Like this. So the start will be the world location. Let's add a reroute to here. And now we want to add to this value. And we want to multiply multiply this uh, forward vector. Let's connect it to here. Let's change this to be a float single precision. So this way, if you didn't know, we will get the we will start the trace from the camera's world location and it, we will add our forward vector multiplied by our, let's get the uh, trace length, multiplied by 80 or basically 75. We will add that to that world location. So the end will be 75 units in front of us. Okay, I think you already knew that because we have been using this on this series before. Now, what we have to do is we actually want to split this out hit and now we want to add a branch, so be a left click. I don't know why I always say that, but yeah, and out hit blocking hit condition like that. We will check if we hit something. If we hit, we don't have to do anything. If we don't, we want to sphere trace by channel like this. And now to the start, we want to get the out hit trace end and also the same thing to the end, like this. So it will basically uh, draw a sphere trace to this location. And let's make the radius like 10. Okay. And also after that, let's add a branch. Let's split the out hit. Let's check out hit blocking hit. And if it's true, we don't have to do anything either. And if it's false, we want to 
spawn actor from class like this. Now we want to get from the class and we want to get the class variable input which is the one here on the uh, on the start node like that and spawn transform let's split it and to the location we want to get the same out heat trace end let's get this to the location and let's add some reroutes of course so it looks a little bit better like this uh, also maybe here something like that now to the rotation let's actually move this even further like this so to the rotation we have to get the player ref let's get the first person camera reference and from here we want to get world rotation and we want to split it we want to split this and we want to only connect the set so it will get the set rotation of our camera basically now collision handling override always spawn inner collisions like that and after that what we have to do from the return value we want to set amount which is the uh, function on the blueprint interface that we created and now to the amount we have to connect uh, amount input so amount which is the same on the input uh, node basically and after that what we want to do is we want to set the dropped to be true so we are not playing the while loop anymore and then let's create another function which will be called remove from inventory now let's go back to the drop item and oh sorry let's go back to the remove from inventory let's add the inputs first the first one will be called index and it will be integer and the second one will be called amount and it will also be integer like that now let's go back to the drop item and let's call the remove from inventory function from there Let's connect the index. So let's search for an index, which is the input here, and to the amount, the amount input also. Let's compile, let's save, let's go to the remove from inventory. And actually, we have five unsaved things, so let's save all just to be sure. Now, here on the remove from inventory, what we have to do is first, we want to get the content of our inventory here. From here we want to get a copy and let's get it a little bit under here like this let's get the index to here so we're getting the content by the index let's align it and now also from this content we want to set array element let's leave some space now we want to split this also split this and actually let's move this a little bit further down like this the item id let's connect it straight to here and let's actually align it better like this and to the item amount let's get this amount and let's subtract now let's subtract this amount from here let's add some reroutes let's actually align it let's try to align all like this yeah so we're getting the index from here and we're getting the amount from there we're subtracting the amount input from it and then we're connecting this back to the item amount like that and also here to the index we want to get this input so let's search for it so index get index simple as that now after that we want to also get from this and we want to check if it's less or equal so when we uh, delete items from our inventory we want to check if it's less or equal to zero it basically it cannot be ever less than zero but let's just make it like this just to be sure so let's add a branch 
be a left click. Let's correct this here. So if it's less than zero or zero, we want to get the content and we want to actually remove index. So we will completely remove it from our inventory. Now the index will be, of course, be the index input like this. So if it's zero or less, we will completely remove it from our inventory. And after that, we have to update the inventory. So let's get the player, uh, sorry, uh, W inventory ref. And from here, update inventory like this. Compile, save. Then we have to go back to the third person map and to the HUD folder. We want to open the W inventory slot widget and to the graph. And here we first have to create a new variable, which will be called inventory index. And it will be type integer and it will be instantiable and explosion spawn. Compile, save, and let's go to the event graph. Let's find the drop function here. Here, let's get our W inventory ref. Let's get a BBC inventory ref from there. And from here, let's call the drop item function that we just created. Okay. And to the class, we want to get our item details. Let's split it. Let's connect it to there. Let's actually move it a little bit further. And to the amount, we want to get the amount and to the index, the inventory index. Simple as that. So we're passing all the variables to here. Compile, save all. Let's go back to the third person map one more time. And let's open the W inventory, yes. Now we have to do a simple thing. Let's go to the graph and let's go to the update inventory function. And here, create W inventory slot widget where we create the widget, we want to refresh this node. We have this new inventory index input here. If you cannot see that, you have to make this instance editable in Exposure Spawn, like I told you before. Now, we want to just add a free route to here, get from it to here, add a few more reroutes so it looks a little bit better, and then maybe align it. Okay, it didn't work as planned. Let's select all T's and press Q. Okay, now it's better. So we're passing just the index from here to here. So the widget slot actually knows which uh, which is its index in the content inventory content uh, array. So let's compile, let's save, let's go to the map and let's add our new item on the interactable pickups. Let's move it to here, let's move it upwards so we can actually see if it if the physics work. Let's play. It should drop to the ground. But my game is lagging very much. Okay, now it stopped lagging. So let's try to pick this base item like this. Now let's open the inventory and we cannot see it. And why is that? Um Oh, one more thing. Let's open the base item one more time. Let's go to the amount. Let's set the default value to one. Compile, save, and let's try once more. So let's see if this lags. Now it works. Let's pick it up. Let's open the inventory. Drop. As you can see, we dropped it here. Now let's try to drop it near the wall. You can see it drops it a lot closer because we created the code like that. And we, oh, we actually can kick it. That's not good. Let's quickly fix that. And let's go back to the base item. And here, let's select the item. We have to change the collision enabled to physics only, no query collision. Now. Compile, save, and let's play once more. And again, this lags. Now we cannot kick it anymore. So yeah, I actually think that was all for this video. If you like what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. 
And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one. Bye.